Because the truth is theory ain't gonna cut it anymore. If theory could cut it, then God could steal from heaven and do what he was doing. But theory could not cut it. So he sent Jesus to bring forth practical. My God, he sent for Jesus to walk.
Your yes, eh, Badabakosata. Your yes to God will cause God to send the right help at the right time. Yes. Can I be real with you this morning? Yes. I was going through a situation for weeks, pushing, 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 doing all I can. I was being prayed for. My God. And sometimes I feel as if I am so weak. But God sends help at the right time. And I remember a sister of mine just coming to my house, hugging me, and praying with me and declaring what God said over my life to break some resistance. Let me tell you something. You are graced for this season. You are graced for the things that you go through. And God will send the right help at the right time. You what will empower you this morning? What will keep you empowered? Staying at the feet of Jesus. Maintaining a relationship with God. Making sure that your prayer life, my God, is the most, the most important aspect of your life. Prayer will keep you connected to the source. And once you are connected to the source, you will know how to navigate through your circumstances. You will know how to go through the season. You will be guided even into empowerment. My God. Anything that you stay around for too long, you begin to resemble it. Yeah. You ever see a wife and a husband in? after being married for years, they start to look like each other here. Yeah. Anything that you stay connected to, you begin to resemble it. You begin to act like it. You begin to talk like it. You begin to move like it. So when you stay connected to the source, which is God, you begin to walk like God. You begin to talk like God. You begin to operate like, can I talk to you this morning? You begin to move like God. My God, and so the supernatural, the signs, the wonders, and the miracles will be your reality in a season of darkness. Somebody praise him this morning. Staying connected to the source will propel you to greatness. Staying connected to the source, my God, will give you the, 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 the tools that are necessary in building the kingdom. There are three things that God is requiring in this season. Three things that God is asking you this morning to say yes. He wants your prayer life to be consistent. He wants you to continue to say yes to serving his purpose. And he wants you to stay committed. Hallelujah. Can we make a declaration this morning that we will continue to say yes? Hallelujah. Can we give God our yes this morning? Even in a season where it looks like nothing ain't happening. God has given many some ministries, some unusual ministries. And because of what is happening around us, we're saying, God, you're sure? God, God this looks like it ever happened. I remember hearing the word of God saying that she's not going to cancel our conference because of the restriction because God gave it to her to do. Imagine 10 more like her saying the same thing. How many lives will be blessed and how many souls will be saved because their yes was consistent. Their yes was deliberate and their yes was by Eba Dabakoso. Any means necessary. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands this morning on Instagram, on YouTube, wherever you are and just begin to talk to God and begin to give Him your yes. I said yes to God years ago behind bars. And maintaining the yes has not been easy. Maintaining the yes has sometimes been a battle. Maintaining the yes sometimes looks ridiculous because of the situations that your yes will bring you through. C can I be real with you this morning? Yes. It was easier to say no. Yeah. It, it, it was easier to say no and run. But the yes will be worth it. Because when you say yes to God, 
It ain't just for you. Yes. Your yes is it, it, not come on. It, it's yes. for you. Yes. yes. The other day I was speaking on a platform. And sometimes there are some personal and painful things that you have to share yes. for people to get deliverance. Yes. And I didn't feel like going on the platform and doing any speaking. I said, God, I'm going through too much. I said, listen, I'm going through too much. I'm weak. And the Lord said, your yes wasn't about you. Your yes wasn't even for you. I gave you one instruction. I said, seek me and I will do the rest. Because yes. I have graced you. Years ago. Years ago. A powerful man of God. I met him at a church. And I was talking about it probably two days ago. And, and many times when we come into the body of Christ, we expect that our prophecies will be just good things. Yeah. You're going to get the bends, you're going to get the five bedroom house, you're going to get the house body look like. Um, what am I the name again? Yeah. But that good looking man there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the prophecy we expect. <laughs> See if I want to ride or not. <laughs> but yeah, that's the prophecy we expect. We expect that we will only hear good things. Because many of us were never taught that long suffering is a gift. We were never taught that. And the man of God said to me, he said, come here. And at the time I was so broke. I thought God was prophesying to me about some money. I run down the altar. And he said to me, he said, woman of God, and that was the first time somebody was referring to me like that. He said, woman of God, God is going to take you through a season and you're going to feel like you're going to die. And it's not to kill you, but to build who God has called you to be. Yes. And all God requires is your obedience. Which means God required my yes. yes. Even through the difficult circumstances. Yes. Can I tell you that immediately, I don't mean a week after them there. <laughs> immediately, my life began to go in shambles. I cried. And I used to be afraid of him, literally. I kid you not. If I go somewhere and he's there, I don't want to come. Literally, my life began to go in shambles. That night when he said it to me, when I bowed my head and talked to God, I cried and I said, yes, God. And I went through some devastating situations for almost three years. At one point, I thought I was going to lose my mind. People that you would think would hold your hand and take you through the season were people that the enemy would use to try to make the situation harder. And you say, God, what is? This doesn't make sense. And this, this is not what your word said. In word said, after you suffer, word. But can I tell you that irrespective of my yes that brought forth those difficult circumstances made me who I am today. And two years ago I was sleeping. And I called me, he said, Resurrected Garvey. I have changed your name because of your obedience. I'm going to take you places far beyond your imagination because of your obedience. I've never been to Bible school. I've never studied ministry. I didn't even want to be in ministry. I didn't. I just loved God and I was grateful because He saved me. And when He required obedience and I gave it to Him, the scripture is so true. That is able to do exceedingly abundantly. And my body can even ask think or imagine. Because ministry was never something I thought about or even imagined. All I wanted to do was to serve Him. As you lift your hands this morning, 
and say yes to God. Yes, Lord. Your yes will not be easy, but he will grace you because he knows where he is taking you. He's taking, to, taking you to the exceedingly abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. 
thank God for Minister Garvey. You know, she spoke very powerfully to us. And we are very grateful for the word that God brought. And we're absolutely, we're absolutely saying yes to God. And as she said, when we say yes to God, it's not only for us. We're affecting an entire generation. We're affecting our lineage when we say yes to God. Whatever we say, the posture of our hearts, we're affecting a whole generation, a whole lineage. So we say yes to God. And if you're just joining us online, welcome to Positioning Youth for Greatness. Youth Say Yes to God Empowerment Session. I'm Sashel Hall, and I'm your host, one of your hosts for today. I want to big up all the speakers that just joined us. We have Pastor Musa Lang, we have Pastor Dylan Sinclair, we have Minister Stacy who just went a while ago. Please to follow her on Instagram at Resurrected Garvey. We have Minister Shanika Lang in the house, so we're fully covered. We're fully covered. And I want to big up um, my leadership. Um, I know Esther Sinclair is online, Mrs. Esther Sinclair. Um, and her husband is here and her children. I want to big up the Waterloo Mennonite Church. That's where I go to church. I want to big up the Waterloo Lit Youth. I want to big up the Waterloo Lit Squad. I want to big up the Waterloo Lit Squad in the house. You know, it's a partnership between the Waterloo Lit Youth and Positioning Youth for Greatness. So I really want to big them up. Someone say you want to come bless up the people them? Yes, come and bless up the people them. Come and bless up the people them. She is the president of the Waterloo Lit Squad. And I'm gonna ask her to just come and just bless us up before the next speaker come. Good morning, everyone. As she as Sasha Rifle said, I am the president of the Waterloo Lit Squad. I don't know what you want me to. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. I'm happy you're here. Welcome, bless the Lord. I'm happy you're here. Praise God. You say yes to God. Amen. So that's Samantha. Um, from the, the president from the and you know she was in her shirt ripping her shirt and I ripping my shirt. You know, if you want a shirt, you can order it. DM us. And we'll get it done for you. All right. So at this time, I'm going to welcome the next speaker, Mrs. Shanika Lang. I don't know if we want to give a drum roll, but we don't have any drum rolls. So, I don't know. Do something. Mrs. Shanika Lang, please to enter the building or enter this side of the building. I really, I really um, appreciate this woman of God as she gave the word for this ministry to start when I was in a very devastating situation and I thought that God had was done with me and I went to church after leaving my boyfriend house or man yard I'm going to church come never want to church you know the Lord said go on a church after your one year of rebellion against me and I went to church and she called me out and she gave me a word that birth positioning youth for greatness and change the very trajectory of my life. So help me welcome Minister Shanika Lang. Come on somebody bless the Lord. Come on somebody glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time when um, Sashel um, speak this testimony it, it, it really um, yeah, it, it, it rocks my brain as how to God, how God works. That even when man writes us off, and even when we write off ourselves, God is still faithful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Woo. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you that even as we come now, God, that you will speak to us and speak through us. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you, God, that even as I avail myself, that you will speak 
to me and speak through me. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will be glorified and you will be exalted. Father, we pray that God, that the anointing of Jesus Christ will be so rich and so evident in this house. Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus against every thought. Lord God, and over the platforms, God Almighty, that will be streaming from. Lord God, we silence every naysayer. We silence every demon and every devil. We silence, God Almighty, everything that would want to oppose this move. God Almighty, we scatter them by fire. And God, we pray that the anointing of God that breaks yoke will break yoke this morning. God, I present myself to you. And God, I say, flow through me. Speak through me. God Almighty, I pray that you will take almighty God full control of my faculties, take control of my mind, take control of my heart, take control of my mouth, my ears and my eyes, my hands and my feet. God almighty, take control. Lord God, I pray that now that you are in full control of my spirit. Lord Jesus, uh, I pray that I will operate in the office that you have called me to. Uh, and God, I am now walking in the volume of the book that you have written about me. Uh, Lord God, let this day be written down that you have come uh, and showed forth your glory. Uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray uh, that the power of Almighty God uh, will shape the very foundation of this movement. Uh, Lord God, I pray, God Almighty, that you will be glorified. Ah, uh, God Almighty, and Satan will be silent. You will be glorified and your people and mighty God will rejoice today as we come to say, say yes. Lord God, our yes will cost us some time. But God, you are the God who is a reward of them that diligently seek you. Father, we pray that you will cover the airways. Yes. We come against technical difficulties. And God, I pray that you will convict the heart of those who have seen the flyer. And that they will love on God not to hear from the speakers but to hear from you. Father, we pray even now that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Father God, we pray that we will be on one accord as the anointing of God will move only on one accord. We pray, God Almighty, that you will flow through these ways, that someone will be delivered. Someone will accept you as Lord and Savior. Someone will reach and recommit their life back to you. And someone will say, I yield, I yield. I cannot take it anymore. Father, I put my ears to your mouth. Speak to me, God. Let there be no ignorance. I take captive every thought. And Lord, I pray even now that you will have your divine way. In Jesus' name. And we say, Amen. Amen. Well, I just come to talk to y'all. I, I I don't know about the preaching, but amen. Praise God. I, I, I thank God today. I must first and foremost pick up the Holy Spirit, the boss of my life, the you know the dun, the dun, the, 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 you know the, 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 the top of the top, the the he might just go there, man. He might just boss. I pick him up today. God, I say glorify yourself. Come on, let us make some noise for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and the Lord. Hallelujah for the Trinity. Hallelujah. And so we come today and we, we lay ourselves at his feet and we say, God, use us. Do whatever you want with us. Amen. We are still in church where two or more gathered touching anything concerning God. He's in the midst. Amen. Amen. And so today I honor the, the, the founder, well, the steward, as I would say, of this wonderful ministry. I don't know why my voice sounding like I'm preaching already. Hallelujah. But I honor Sachel this morning. Sachel Hall, big up yourself, sweetie. Um, I also want to honor my dark chocolate, my bunununus, my baby daddy, my lover. Oh God, my good up, good up husband who put a ring on it. Yes, that is Pastor Musa Leng, who is also my pastor. I want to show honor to him this morning. Come on, help me big up my pastor and my husband this morning. I honor him wherever I go because he's a good man and he's good to me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. I also want to pick up one of my favorite person, otherwise from Stacy. Yes, God Almighty. Oh, oh, you know, as our minister Garvey. Oh, yes. I want to pick up Pastor Dylan. Come on, put your hands together for the mouth of God. 
Hallelujah. And I say, yes, to my sister, big up your good, clean body self. Yes, Jesus. And young people think so we can't bother with the whole, um, you know, um, ramification of church language. We have to use nowadays language and we're not sinning because our body good and clean. Jesus sanctified her in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we want to big up the ministers that are here. We want to big up my big friend over there. So live over. And yes, yes, I'm not praise God. Oh, I'm supposed to be praise God. Ooh. And Minister Tavon, bless you, bless you. And Ryan, big up yourself. Everybody were in here, just kiss yourself with me. All right, all right. Bless God, bless God. All right, so this morning, I I, I, I know I have a word from God. And as Samantha normally say, my bundonus, um, that I always drip in our shirt. I don't see it that way. I just speak what God wants me to say. Ah, God Almighty. And I keep on having myself in trouble, right, Giselle? Oh, I am a chronic troublemaker for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning as I spoke to the Lord, he gave me a word. Whew. Oh, Jesus. So why everybody looks so nervous already? Oh, Jesus. Whew. Ay, ay, ay. Everybody turn your Bibles with me to Jonah chapter 3. No, oh, I hope nobody with the excitement here. Jonah, fix your face now, please. Jonah chapter 3. I'm on the way, I'm so nervous. Jonah chapter 3. And we'll be reading the first three verses. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. And deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. Amen? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is already anointed. So, Father, anoint me and let your word go forth like a double edged sword, cutting asunder, changing lives, and bringing edification to the body. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I would like to use for my theme Yes, from a rebellious place. Why well, everybody else coming Pastor Devon, where you come your mouth? Amen. Yes, from a rebellious place. How many of us have been in a place where we have been running from God? I hear Minister Garvey say that some of us have been running from God. Some of us have been giving God excuse. Some of us have been in a place where we have been living mediocre and we have been living substandard to what God has called us. We have been in places that sometimes it's only when we find ourselves in the peak style like the prodigal son that we will actually realize and come to ourselves to know that at the end of the day God has called us and God has a perfect plan for our life as Jeremiah 29 declares. Now we see the story of Jonah and we know the story of Jonah that Jonah was in a place that God spoke to him and said I'm sending you to the wicked city of Nineveh. The thing about it is that Jonah had a place where he was content, contemplating that Nineveh did not, did not deserve the mercies of God. And so is it that some of us think that other people or even ourselves do not deserve the mercies of God. Yes. Oh my God. I'm not preaching, I'm talking. Whew. Hallelujah. And so Jonah was at that place uh, where he was looking and he was saying, But God, uh, how can you be merciful to these wicked people who have been sacrificing their children, who have been sacrificing, offering sacrifices to idols, they have been sacrificing from a place uh, of idol worshiping. And how many of us uh, have replaced God uh, with the things that we have created and man have created? Uh, we have replaced God with the boyfriend, we have replaced God uh, with the children. We have replaced God with the job. We have replaced God even with the very ministry that he has given us. We have replaced God with the gifts and talent. But we have not been in a place where God can speak to us anymore. Because we think that because we are doing the things of God, we are with God. I said 
said I was going to talk. I'm, I'm talking. Because sometimes, Giselle, it comes to a place where we think that because we're speaking in tongues and we're operating and laying on of hands and operating from the gift place, that does not mean that we're operating from the presence place. We are just operating from charisma when God wants us to have a relationship, not a rationalism.
adultery. I'm coming out of stealing, lying, prostituting God, my very soul. I'm coming out of that place. And God, I don't think I look attractive enough. I don't think I look good enough. My story does not sound like I, 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 I've been in church long enough. My story is a messed up, a dried up, a tangled up, an entanglement. Oh God, with Satan. Lord God, my story is one where I've been broken, beaten, battered, tattered, and torn. My story is one that I've been written off like a car. My story is one where I have been even in a place of a dungeon. But God, you told me, you promised me that you know my end from my beginning. Now, God, I come with a broken yes from a rebellious place. I have been running in the wrong direction. God changed my direction in the right one. of not listening to God. Oh Jesus, can I talk to somebody this morning? We pay for the mistakes that we say, all right, we know it all. We have seen it all. Lord Jesus, we pay for some things that we never have to pay for. Can you imagine that if Jonah had just obeyed to go to Nineveh, he wouldn't have to pay for the ticket to go to Tarshish. Ah, God Almighty, but instead, he decided to pull the money, the very money that God provided uh, to do his own thing. How many of us uh, have been using the very thing that God has provided uh, to exploit and to encourage our rebellious ways? Ah, uh, uh, God Almighty, am I talking to anybody this morning? Woo. So Jonah was on the boat, our ship, whatever this scripture you want to say is, and Jonah decided that, listen, I'm going to Tarshish. I don't care. But I guess Jonah did not link up with Brother David as the old preachers they would have said. I guess he never knew. Like David said, even if I made my bed in hell, you are there. Even I take the wings of the morning, you are there. Where can I hide from your presence? Ah, oh, God Almighty, you could have gone underneath the bed. You could have Jim Squeechy some more. You could have run to your car one no more. God is going to find you. He's going to see you. And he knows you. He said, all the days of your life is written in his book. Now, if all the days of your life is written in his book, where can you run to? How well can you hide? God doesn't need a night goggles. He doesn't need a night vision. His eyes go to and fro the earth. He doesn't need glasses. In in I at twenty twenty, if you want to do it like that. Oh Jesus, if you put on a six inch wall, he knows, uh, he can see it. In the, in the need, he is omnipresent, he is omniscient, uh, he is God all by himself. Uh, and I think sometimes we don't play uh, the sovereignty of God. Uh, that's why we can run the risk that we run uh, with our life, thinking uh, that we can sit in church, Gisela, and say, My life is not my own. Uh, to you I belong, but we can live from church and still live a life of a sinner, a righteous sinner, oh God. Lord God, oh my God Almighty, a preacher, one of the fathers prayed, and he said, I am praying a prayer. Minister Garvey, he stood, the, 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 the history, church history said, I think it's William Booth, he stood behind the pulpit, and he did not move from where he was. It's not like now where we run and kick over bench and run with all kind of charisma and all kind of things. Well, I am not against that. Though. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit lick your emotion, take off your dust. Yeah. Holy Ghost. But he stood behind it, Minister Brown. And when he stood behind it, the, the, the history book says that William Booth stood with the papers in his hands like this on the podium. And, he read, and you can go ahead and look it up. He preached a message called Sinners in the Hand of a Hungry God. Lord Jesus and people, minds and long. Remember, they did not have a sound system like what we have now. Felt like they were slipping into hell. He did not run up and down. He stood where he was. And he read through. 
three pages uh, of a sinner in the hand of an angry God. Uh, and he spoke above how people have become rebellious. Uh, that we think that we know it all. Uh, that we think that we can do without God. Uh, no, we can go and make our body remain. Uh, Lord Jesus, we can get the breast made over. If we don't like them too long. Uh, we like them round and pear shape. Uh, we can get the upper bottom jeans. Uh, uh, with the boots, with the fur. Uh, Lord, oh my God. Oh, I'm still in church. <laughs> church. Go oh, Holy Ghost. We can get all of that and yet still we're still empty. We're still drowning with depression. Yes, we can step into the party. We can step into all of the things of, of, that the enemy enticed our flesh with. But we're still empty because I remember those days, days here when we day in a party I drink up a vodka I want to up the oh God Almighty, oh Jesus. A bubble. It was up top boss then. It was RDX. It was cartel. We were bubbling to oh, 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 oh it's me alone. Oh Jesus. When we got to wet and slippery in prospect. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. And Dutty Friday and Mass Camp. Lord Jesus, and when we went there, after we have done drink, after we have done sex, after we have done our custom bad word left, right, and center, we still felt empty. We still were searching. But then we realized that God required a yes. And from a rebellious place, from a broken place, we gave a yes. Yes, sometimes the yes are empty. But say it until your spirit Hallelujah. believe it. Yes. Yes. Say it until your heart receive it. Say it until you start manifesting it. Say it until, uh, Lord Jesus, some of us, even when we start, uh, we start juke, start like some car. Uh, Lord God, we start almighty God like a ladder. Oh, Jesus, I mean, oh, God. <laughs> it's all over. Oh Jesus. Allah backfire, man of God. Yeah, yeah, pow, 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 pow. Lord Jesus, but anyway, God requires us to do start until we start running. Some of the time we require for somebody to start pushing us, start empowering us onto purpose. But some of us, like Jonah, have been running. So when the Lord gave me the word. I'm saying, God, they have me say, we always watch out some things will bring trouble. But I hear Marvia Providence, Providence says, when trouble in your life, sing oh, praises. Oh. Sing praises. Yes. Ah, Jesus. But at the end of the day, it still comes back to your yes. yes. And no matter who want to say what they want to say, it still come back to that place where it's you and God. Yes. I was on a program yesterday and I said to, said to the audience, I said, listen, your yes is a place from a brokenness. Does not require Almighty God, the audience to applaud you, but it requires for heaven That's to sanction it. you. That's Lord it. Jesus, it does not require for people to say, well done, Giselle, well done, Sashella. A matter of fact, the very church people that you seek to empower will turn around and say that you're not good enough to be preaching the gospel. You're not good enough to be walking the road. And worse if God start bless you. Okay, oh my God. Lord Jesus, something wrong with that. Because somebody died, it was not God. And made them secretary of heaven. Oh, it is so even the very people that you will be sent to will not accept you. But if you look to Jesus, uh, who is the author and finisher of your faith, uh, Lord God, it doesn't matter what anybody wants to say. Uh, the Bible says in John uh, that the people that God Jesus was sent to uh, did not receive him. Uh, why? Because the people who these are darker uh, does not like the light. Uh, they don't like when you come, Gisela, in their atmosphere with your righteous living. Uh, they don't like when you look too much like God. Uh, because when you look too much like God, uh, you're telling them that they need to put their house in order. They're telling you that you're not good enough. So what they do, they envy 
the God in you. So because they end with the God in you, they start tearing you down. And woe unto you if you have some insecurities. Lord God, they start playing on it like a drum. Lord God, they start playing on it like a keyboard. Oh God Almighty, they start telling you, Stacy, that you're not ready. They start telling you that you don't the testimony invalid. They start telling you now that all of a sudden the very people that was saying well done is saying hello. You need to dress but a little. You're getting too prominent. Ah, God Almighty. Because, because, they think that God has not qualified you for the race. Unusual. They don't see the private training. <laughs> they don't see the private tug and war. Mm-hmm. Everybody see both win Olympics. Nobody see the private war. The times when he has to go to the doctor for these scoliosis. Nobody see the time when he has to be on bed rest. Nobody time. Nobody see the time when he has to fight with his coach because he don't feel like he wants trade for the deal. Lord God, nobody see the private war, but they want to share in the public victory. Lord Jesus, when it's beneficial to them. Oh God, am I talking to anybody here? Tell us, I'm talking, I'm talking, man. Amen. So, Jonah, no on the ship. How many of us are on the wrong ship? But now look out there, so remember. <laughs> How many of us are on the wrong ship? How many of us are operating wrong? Talking wrong? Singing wrong? Playing wrong? Some of us need to stop playing that dish and do with God. Ouch. And upscotch. Some of us need to stop playing room for rent applying with him. Some of us need to stop having one night stands with God. Ooh, some of us need to stop having quickies with God. Some of us need to stop thinking that God a boopsie. And even one of them. Oh my God, what do you call it? Sugar daddy. <laughs> Woo. Don't we know the sugar daddies? Sometimes you pay more for the sugar daddy than how you him appear you will feel where he might heal. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, just want to make sure it's it's working. Go ahead. Let me just take the time out and say this. Your rebellion will cost you a lot more than your obedience. Let me say that again. Your rebellion will cost you a lot more than your obedience. Amen. 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 Jesus. So at the end of the day, people of God, Jonah, can you imagine now Jonah said made up on a cruise? Oh God. I'm on a cruise. Giselle, I'm on a cruise, Sasha. I'm on a cruise, sweetheart. Oh, God, I'm on a cruise. Oh, look on the blue skies. Look on, and, and them things say, seem never nice. <laughs> say nice, so it's scary until it have to come out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Anybody ever eat curry and go drink milk on top of that? Bad combination. <laughs> Bad combination. And that's how it is when we keep we start with one sin. We mix it up. Mm-hmm. We mix it up. Just like when you drink rum cream. I'm not sure the rum mix shine it. And you see the milk start curdle. Oh Jesus. Oh my God. Am I talking to anybody? And so and so we 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 Jonah was saying this one. You're all smart, God. How much more minutes to have? And then I'll the time. So I shall have much more minutes to have for each. Okay, sorry. Jonah said, yes, God. Me all smart, yo. You know, see how quick me reach. Me almost step on my wheel. Me make me wheel now. Yeah. Then the songwriter said, me get the team them. Don't you? So me have a bus now. Yeah. 
Abi adik abi abis syam ni serat. Nih ada jing ni, so we are the boss now. And so we start out in our sinful life. Because now we start getting the house, we start getting the car, we start look good. And we think so them when the car we are going to mark. And we can't take up any makeup on wall and don't even think about the price. Because no money are flow, money a run. Oh Jesus, and we think about boss and we reach. We're large and in charge. And then the storm of life arrives. We are a girl. Yeah. Some troubles such as that we encounter is because of sometimes at a group of people where we are encounter, where we are run with. Yes. Yes. The trouble that sometimes that we run in, why? Because of Jonah's rebellion, the people on the ship was in trouble as well. Yes. Whose rebellion are you in trouble of? Taking in. Who's rebellion? Are we saying, yeah, man, you can't do your thing. You know, God, I'm going to bless you. God, I bless you. Come on, man. You have, a, you have it together. Who's rebellion? Are we partaking in? Because when trouble take you, when trouble take you, it's because you have accommodated the rebellion because maybe you now be this to be a god but the people around you Jonah can you imagine the people on the ship was saying well and we, we set out on a good voyage we set out in a place where we say all right then uh, are we on a smooth sailing but then uh, let me tell you something about um sea listen when you come on to a storm there is nothing to perfect the storm that's why a hurricane can build up in the sea water because there is nothing ah uh, god almighty to buffet the storm uh, i have studied shipping and logistics yeah me my look dogs uh, but god has been so good to me that i went to university uh, because of obedience without almighty god pain i said praise god ah uh, uh, lord jesus oh come on thank god with me now yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And so we were at that place that I learned that when ship caught in a storm and they have containers on, it is imperative for the dog master to tie down every container. And if the container is too high or higher than the deck, then they will have to start pulling down the containers or else containers will tip the ship. How many of us have been tipping the ship? One day it's going to capsize. One day we...